Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll be showing you how to remove a Linux distribution. I have Ubuntu 20.04 installed here, but this works across the board with most Linux distributions. So maybe you're done here using things or you just want to do some maintenance and move operating systems around potentially to other disks. Well, we can do this fairly easily here. This is a dual booted Windows and Linux system, specifically Ubuntu, and we will be removing Ubuntu so we just have Windows back. I'm right now in my Ubuntu side of things. I'm going to shut down and reboot into Windows. So if you're dual booting, you'll be fairly familiar with this screen, which is the new Grub screen, which allows you to select between the various different operating systems available on your system. Now getting rid of this entry of Grub in the UEFI firmware settings will be part of this video. This is where people get stuck the most. So I'm loading into my Windows side of things. But before we do, take a moment to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more operating system and programming videos. All right, and when we're back onto the Windows side of things, we'll run our first utility. Let's go down to the search bar and search for something called disk manage and we'll get this create and format hard disk partitions. That's what we want to select from the control panel. And in here, we'll get all sorts of disk information. Mainly what we're looking for is our Windows side versus the Linux side. So if you installed everything alongside Windows, whatever your Linux distribution may be, that means they'll line up together here. So basically this side is my Windows side. I don't want to touch anything over here. And then on the right hand side is where I find my Linux partition. Again, recovery is part of the Windows side that allows you to recover your system in case something goes wrong. Then EFI helps manage your boot entries and that was created with Windows as well. And then we have C, our root file partition for the Windows side. And then I have about 20 gigs here, which I know my Linux side has about 20 gigs as well. So I'm confident that this is the Linux root file partition here. So this is what I want to be removing today. So mainly this uninstall process applies to people who have installed Linux alongside Windows. Basically, Windows existed first and you decided to add in Linux as a second operating system on the same disk. As we can tell, everything here belongs to the same disk here, disk zero. And I have my Windows side again and my Linux side. One thing I want to make sure to delete very first before we mess with anything in here is the actual boot entry in the EFI system partition. We'll need to do this in order to get rid of Grub from popping up at all. Otherwise, if we do delete our root file partition for Linux, then you'll have a floating entry that won't really let you boot into any operating system because it can't point to Grub anymore. With that all being said, let's start up a command prompt by going into the search bar and typing CMD. Make sure you right click and run as administrator or select run as administrator from the option menu here for the app. Say yes to run it as administrator. And in our new command prompt, we can run the following command, which will give us all the UEFI entries of the system. Let's do that by typing B C D edit space forward slash E N U M enum space firmware. And if we press enter, we will get a bunch of entries here. First it says, firmware boot manager and it gives us a list and a display order of the various different boot managers as well as the firmware boot manager. Now if you have multiple Linux operating systems on one disk you have to be careful because you might have multiple grub instances installed. It can get kind of messy so I always urge people to back up their EFI partition completely. There are tools that allow you to back the EFI partition fairly quickly. So make sure to look around for something if you're not confident in what you are doing and always back up all your data before messing around with your operating system. You wouldn't want to lose your files 
because you made a mistake. You also might have thought that you needed fancy tools in order to be able to delete your Linux boot entry, but we're going to use this command prompt and the command we just issued in order to get all the information needed. So here it says Windows Boot Manager. Of course, I don't want to mess around with that at all. I do see another firmware application with an identifier. And this one's interesting because I see Ubuntu mentioned it has a path here and a .efi file. So I'm very confident that this is my entry in the EFI partition that allows the EFI to figure out how to run and boot into Grub. So I want to make note of this identifier here. I wanna highlight this entire deal, including the curly braces and copy that. So if you wanna copy, there's two ways. You can select, go down to edit and hit copy if you have things selected or if you just right click while having this all selected, that's another way to copy. With that done, and make sure to go through the rest of the firmware applications, see if there's any mention of Ubuntu left. There really shouldn't be unless you have multiple operating systems. And then I will issue the next command, which is bcd edit space forward slash delete. And then I will paste in that identifier that I had in order to delete that specific EFI partition entry. Again, make absolute sure that you have the proper one selected and copied over. This will delete the EFI entry, which is necessary in order to completely get rid of Ubuntu or other Linux operating systems. Next, I will press enter and it says the operation was completed successfully. Great job and make sure to smash that like button for me if you went ahead and made it this far. All right, we will minimize that and go back to our disk management tool where now we will be able to delete the Linux root file partition. This is the last thing left here. So I know this 20 gigs is my Linux root file partition. Everything else belongs to Windows. One's a recovery, one's the EFI. And the last one is the C drive, which belongs to Windows. So I'm selecting this one right clicking and now I can delete my volume since I'm confident this is Linux. And once I do that, I'm being warned the selected partition was not created by Windows and might contain data recognized by other operating systems. Do you want to delete this partition? It's basically warning you that it's about to delete any and all data on that Linux side of things. By now, you would have backed everything up. And if you're confident you're ready to delete it, go ahead and do so. And now we have 20 gigs of unallocated space. Of course, yours might be different. Our disk space is going to vary depending on what you gave the system initially, how much space you had available to allocate to Linux. Next, I'm going to select the C drive because I don't want this unallocated space just hanging out. Might as well use it for something. So I'll right click on the C drive and extend my volume. Now I can go through this wizard and extend into the unallocated space. I'll hit next, followed by select the disk zero and the unallocated space that I can extend into, which is the 20 gigs. I'll hit next again. Now I'm about to complete the wizard. It says I will extend the volume and the current disk selected is disk zero. It's going to extend by about 20 gigs. I'm finishing up and that's it. Now the C drive is around 64 gigs, at least in my case, yours can be much bigger. Depends on how much space you had unallocated. We're getting very close here. Make sure to smash that like button for me if you haven't already, and let's reboot the system. All right, I'm exiting out of everything and going down and hitting the restart button. If everything goes smoothly, you will not get the Grub menu. You won't get a Grub rescue screen, nothing related to Linux, and you will automatically go to the Windows welcome screen. Let's try logging in and everything seems to work just fine. Two other things I will mention is you may want to re-enable secure boot as well as fast boot if you had to disable those two things in your BIOS settings to get Linux to work. But besides that, let's make sure to check that C drive to see if we got all of our space back. If I go down to this PC and I check out my local disk C, I have 42.7 gigs free of the 63.3 gigs that I have available. Before I only had about 40 something gigs available. So now I have much more space. Everything seems fine. We're not being asked to select an operating system from Grub and 
that's it. Congratulations. If you made it this far, you've successfully gotten rid of Linux and now you can reinstall it on a separate storage disk or just move things around. Or if you're just done using it, this is the way to get rid of everything. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.